Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris. I'm coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church. This is PC Studios, and it is July the 18th, 2022. How in the world are you doing today? Hey, on this beautiful Monday, listen, it's been a great weekend. Uh, good to see everybody that's out there with me today. Make sure you sign in. If you want to be live with us, you need to be at facebook.com slash Pastor Chris McCombs. Other people can sign in. There's, uh, there's YouTube channels and other Facebook channels and Twitch all going on at the same time. So anyway, go um, go check any of those out. And again, if you're with me live, God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. And if you're with me uh, after hours, I know some of you check in in the evenings. Uh, God bless you. Thanks for being here with me today. All right, so um, let's get into, we're talking about, uh, we're in First Thessalonians still. We're on chapter two, and we're talking about word of God speak, about God's word and how it speaks to us and how uh, how it affects our lives and how it should involve around how maybe culture might view us and how society might view us, but how we're also to, to honor the Word of God in the church and in our personal lives as Christians. So today, I want to get to the point where Paul is preaching to the church in Thessalonica and encouraging them in the Word encouraging them to be true to the word despite what's going to happen outside in the world despite those that might try to silence them and so as we discuss this i'm going to today talk about receiving the word and then tomorrow we'll get into uh, sometimes the results of living by the word is that a society will become hostile and then on wednesday we'll discuss um, how there's like a cancel culture even in the city of Thessalonica in the first century, just like today, trying to cancel out or silence speech that people might disagree with, especially if it's religious in origin. So, um, and then Thursday we'll just kind of do a mishmash, probably probably take this last two that last day to cover a lot of turf that's going on in our culture. But today I want us to talk about us. How's a Christian? How's the church supposed to approach the Word of God? One, we should have a high regard of Scripture. If you're out there right now, every single person that's a Christian, we have a high regard. We believe it's authoritative. In other words, it is an authority over our lives. We believe that the Word of God is the written Word inspired by God, written by the hand of man, but inspired by God, and that the Scripture's inspired, the Scripture's infallible, and the scriptures inerrant. So three things, because it's God breathed. So it's God inspired. It's infallible. It is. It is not have any, any, um, any faults with it. And then in, inerrant. It's without error, based on what it's writing. If it's writing historic content, poetry, doesn't matter what the genre is. It is without error, pertaining to what it's speaking to and infallible in its morality, and then, of course, we know it's inspired by God. So, if you're a Christian, and you don't have that high regard of the Word of God, then something's wrong, because we should have that, that, that approach to the Word of God. So, to everyone out there, I want to encourage you, if you believe that, you're a true Christian. You're a true follower of Jesus Christ. You're abiding in the vine. You're abiding in Christ, and His Word is abiding in you. And you may not be living it out perfectly. There may be some issues, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So what's a Christian to do? They're to receive the Word of God. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's just focus on verse 13. This is why we constantly thank God, because when you receive, when you receive the Word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as a human message, but as it truly is, the Word of God, which also works effectively in all who believe. So there's several items here I want us to focus on. I use this quarterback receiver uh, approach. Like, a, you know, I brought up Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, uh, Walter, you know, uh, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. Thinking of these combinations, uh, you know, that, that throughout history, uh, these great combinations of quarterback receiver and then compared that to a pastor preaching. When the word of God is preached, the pastor wants the congregation to receive the word of God. Just like a quarterback, every time he throws the ball, he wants the receiver to catch the ball. I mean, that's the right. Now, that doesn't always happen. 
Um, many balls are dropped, many are overthrown, many are underthrown, there are even interceptions, there's all kinds of things, again, this analogy of what Satan can do. But when you get it right and you catch it, and then sometimes you catch it and you run for a touchdown or you catch it for a touchdown. So as, as a pastor, it's very similar to that. A pastor is to preach the Word of God because it is the Word of God, and the people of God are receive the Word of God because it is, well, the Word of God. So that's, that's what we hope to have happen. That's, that's what every believer should desire. That's what a pastor should desire. That's what a church should desire. So it says here that we thank God. We constantly thank God. Now, the we there is Paul, Timothy, and Silas because they've been preaching the word of God. So any pastor should constantly thank God when his people get it. So when I know that you're receiving the word, yesterday those that received the word, many people came up and said that was anointed, you know, and got it. There might have been some that didn't. I'm not sure. But those that got it, great. You received the word of God you take in your life today. Those of you that are back for woe, this expanding, again, getting that, that ability to expand on what you were just taught and grow in greater detail. You're receiving that word. You're, you're letting that word into your life. That's what you want to see happen. And I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for those that want to learn more. I'm grateful for those that appreciate uh, the preaching of the word and that they look at the word of God for what it is. And that's what they said. We thank God for those who receive the word. Now, this what did they receive? They received the word of God. And, and Paul is saying right here, when you heard it, you knew it wasn't a human message. You knew it was not a human message. So listen, when we receive the word of God into our lives, we receive more of Jesus because Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word incarnate. So I want you to, to pause for a moment. If you're, if you're a Christian, at some point in your life, you receive Jesus Christ into your life. You receive salvation. You, you, you know, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. At some point you did that. And when you did that, you became a Christian. You became a Christ follower. And so you receive Jesus who now indwells you with his Holy Spirit. And he has now justified you before the Father. He's regenerated you. You were born again. And now sanctification is taking place. You're becoming more and more. You should be changing, right? Transforming, being more and more like Jesus. So how we view the Word of God, what I just said, this high view of Scripture, the inerrancy, the infallibility, the inspiration of it, also will tell us how we view Jesus because Jesus is the Word in the flesh, but he also gave us the Word of God. And so... The word that was spoken from the very beginning, in the beginning God created the heavens and earth, God spoke each day and it happened. The same thing God's doing now, he's speaking to us through his word and we receive it for what it is. And so Paul's like, I thank God for them. I thank God when the people that I'm preaching to receive the word of God, they welcome it into their lives. So I think that's another thing. Uh, Christians have to welcome the word of God into their lives, not as a human message. This is really important. I'm not, I'm not here to lecture to you. I'm not here to do a, a secular discussion. I'm here to talk about the life-transforming, living Word of God, to preach that to you. It's not out of human intellect. It's not out of human purposes. It's, it's divine. And so I talked about that. It's a, preaching is a divine moment. And I think sometimes Baptists, maybe we are people of the Word, and we do honor the word of God being preached, but sometimes maybe we forget what that really means. We don't use words like, that's a divine moment. We don't use words like, that's anointed. We don't use, we don't think of that. We don't, that's a divine message. You know, that's, that is a message of God. Somebody saying, that's Pastor Chris, or that's that. We have an ability, unfortunately, to where we lessen the preaching by treating it like it's a human message. Paul is saying, that's not what we're supposed to do. Paul is saying, listen, I'm, I, and I'm just going to paraphrase it for me, in, in context to me. Whenever Chris McCombs gets up, even though he's human, and he preaches the word of God, something happens in that moment. And God can use that moment. And then something's also happening in you, the audience. As the word of God is preached from a fallible man, the infallible word of God is preached 
penetrating the hearts of fallible people with the infallible Word of God to transform them, to enlighten our minds, to convict us of sin, to lead us to change, maybe lead us to repentance, to affirm good things in our life, maybe to teach us, to guide us, to direct us, to correct us, to inform us. All those things are taking place in a divine way, in a divine moment, through a divine proclamation based on the divine word of God in, in a divinely anointed moment. So the anointing falls, the word of God goes out, it's proclaimed in truth. This is how I view the preaching. Now, that sounds a little different for Baptists. It does, right? But if we all step back, that's what's supposed to be taking place. That's what's supposed to happen. We are supposed to receive the word of God in that moment when it's preached. We receive the word of God, not as a human message, but as it truly is. And as it truly is, listen to what Paul says, the word of God, in quotations, the word of God. That is why, if you, if you think about it, yes, we have music, and I said this yesterday, man, I'm so proud of my family on the handbells. Well, that was pretty cool. They were all transferring bells and all this kind of stuff. Wow. Um, that was beautiful. The worship was awesome. The songs were awesome. Been in the praise band and the praise team singing and the audio visual team, you know, it was really a really, really well put together worship service. And all that is beautiful and wonderful, and we need that. We need to be able to praise God. We need to, to worship God. We read scripture. We did a lot of moving parts. We had the life of the church through the announcements. Uh, people were, you know, visitors filled up visitor cards. You know, I, I mean, there was, there, was, there was life. There was life, and there was, God was present. And then we got to the moment of the word of God. We preach the word of God for what it is. And so that's, that's what we do. And it says that they welcome that. They welcome this in Thessalonica. They welcome the preaching as coming from God, as the word of God. And then because they received it as such, this is, this is where it applies to you. As, you know, think about it. A quarterback throws out the pass. They catch the football. You know, they catch the football right here, right? They catch that football. And as they catch that football, you know, they receive and they run with the ball. They try to get a touchdown. They try to get a first down. You receive it so it will transform your life and start to change you. And what ends up happening in the Bible here, it says, which also works effectively in you who believe. So if you believe and you receive the word of God, it will work effectively in you. In other words, it will impact your life it will start to change you. It will be effective in you. And I, I want to use words that mo a lot of times Baptists don't use. Because it's a divine moment, and because it's divine word of God, listen to what I'm about to say. Divine things happen in your life. Supernatural things can happen in your life. The exposure of sin, the confession of sin, the changing from sin, the repentance from sin, uh, the motivation to serve, the calling that God can place on your life to ministry or the affirmation of God over your life through your faith. It, on and on and on, you, you can receive it and, and grow and learn and prosper in your faith. It works for your good in you. It effectively works in you, supernaturally even rearranging your life and your stinking thinking and all kinds of stuff. Positive things come about because we receive the word of God to those who believe. Those who don't believe, we read this and, and it really means nothing to them. This is just a book. In fact, they're hostile to this book. They don't, they don't believe that it's really the word of God. But we do. And if we do believe this, then it can work effectively in our life. It can really work to change us, to move us, to motivate us, to, to transform us into the people God wants us to be. That's what happens in church. That's what happens when the preaching happens. Now, I know sometimes, you know, um, maybe I'm not in my A game. Maybe some pastors don't have their best moments. Maybe it's not the best sermon. Maybe it doesn't speak directly 
to you. Maybe it just, there wasn't a whole lot there. Maybe you get a few things out of it. But maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe it's for somebody else. Then you're praying as the word of God goes out. God, speak this to someone. God, speak this to someone. And that someone might be you. And I, I hope that when I preach it, like I think Paul, I think Paul, Timothy, and Silas were probably awesome pastors. And when they got up to preach, they meant, they, they knew what they were preaching. And so when I get into uh, on the platform, the pulpit area, and I start to preach, I really believe that what I'm doing in that moment has something that's greater than me. Despite my sin, despite what I might have gone through that day, despite my bad attitudes, despite what might have happened the day before, whatever, and your life too, right? <laughs> what the baggage people, whatever brokenness we brought in that day, that God can do something supernatural in that moment. Call me naive. Call it foolish. Call it whatever you want. The world might. Call it just another book. Call it just a, a civic moment, just where a gathering happens, just an assembly. No, 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 no. I call it divine. Just like Paul right here. They receive the word of God as it truly was, the word of God, and it worked effectively in their lives. I pray that the word of God is working effectively in your life. I pray that you view preaching as this holy moment, this, this divine moment where God can do some supernatural things in your life. And I pray that you, you the audience today, will receive the word of God and it will work effectively in your life. Hey, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you have been blessed by this. And I look forward to spending the rest of the week digging in deeper into these things. But remember, the word of God speaks. Receive it and let it work effectively in your life. These two realities are God loves you. So do I. I'll see you here tomorrow. You take care.